Hello there. And how are you doing today? Oh, oh. oh, I'm so delighted to hear it. And me? Well, I was rather hoping that the repairs made on the computer would be ready to go for a flight today, but would you like to see what I did? Is that a good idea? Okay. All right then, here's the main computer with the two new cards in it. Now they are Gigabyte RTX 3060 gaming cards and each one has 12 gigabytes of memory on it. And I got two of them as I have to run seven screens. Now these are not SLI capable because of the number of screens that are connected. The space I have to work in is very small. Just look at it. Here's the main computer. I named it Flight 1. Next to the wall and below the three large television screens. The gap between the simulator and the wall is just big enough to hold the computer. And here you can see the power sockets and some of the wiring of the main instrument panel itself. After I remove the computer to change out the graphic cards, then I have to reach over the computer to start to plug in all the video cables, the LAN cables and all the USB and other cables as well. This is looking down from the top and you can see it is a mess of spaghetti there. And that's the back of the second computer you can see. That's flight two. That's the one that powers the three external views on the big television screens. Now, once I got all these things hooked up, then I had to rearrange the screens. I had to move the monitor screen around so that they align themselves as closely as possible to the actual instrument panel. Here are the seven monitors and their connections to the two graphic cards. And here's how it looks after I've moved all the screens around. Number seven is actually the main desktop and it has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Screens 2, 3 and 1 are the main instrument screens and each are 1366 by 768. Screens 5 and 6 are the CDU screens and they are 1024 by 768 each while the middle one, number four, is 1280 by 960. And this is the cockpit with the screens all lit up, yes. The blue is my personal desktop color and not the dreaded blue screen of a Windows crash. Now here you can see the three monitors behind the panel. The two instrument screens on the left are actually one monitor. The two on the right are also one monitor and the center is a third monitor. The two CDU screens are there and the center lower display unit between them. And the main computer screen is over here on the left. The screen in the lower right is a tablet I use for Navigraph charts and it's attached to the captain's yoke. The shelf, well, I use that to hold two keyboards, one for each computer. Now, once the screens were arranged, the next job was to sort out all the USB connections. Here is the screen showing the devices and printers connected to the computer. There are headphones and microphones and the main speakers. And here are the seven monitors. And there are the two controller cards. 
One is the Leo Bodna card that I use to connect all the extra switches and buttons I need. And the other is a standard joystick card for the captain's yoke and pedals. The other two devices are the keyboard and mouse. Flight 1, of course, is the main computer unit. Then underneath are 20 USB devices that are connecting all the radio modules as well as the forward overhead and the main instrument panel, including the two chronometers on the panel. If any of these show an error, then they won't work. This screenshot shows some errors. It appears that the motherboard is not capable of handling all the USB devices I have, so I act actually had to add a small USB extension card to the computer. Then I was able to see all of the USB devices. After the USBs were connected, then I had to assign the OC4BA software that connects the hardware to the PMDG aircraft, which in my case is Ryanair 186. This is the SIOC software, showing each device and the associated device ID. So yes, a simple change of graphic cards meant a lot of work associated with it. Not as easy as it seems, is it? And this, this is the little extension card that I had to put in in order to get the extra USBs to work. So apparently, this particular motherboard does have an issue with the number of USB connections it will hold. Well, I put it all together again and I went flying and went off from Bengaluru to the Maldives. And I was at the initial approach fix for coming in for landing at runway 18 and P3D crashed. Yes, crashed again. So what to do? Well, I should tell you a little history about the motherboards that I have. I bought an Asus X99 motherboard back in 2016. It was top of the line then. And it was used to power the entire simulator as it was before I introduced the three television screens to it. And that was in January this year. That was when I added a second computer to distribute the load. One computer to run the main simulator hardware and the other one to power the external views on the television screens. Now the second computer was an identical, and uh, is an identical motherboard to the one I already had. And it was given to me by a very good friend of mine. He did tell me, of course, that he'd had some issues with it right after he bought it. And after sending it back to Asus for repair, they returned it fixed and he said, everything would be fine, or so we thought. Anyway, the second motherboard, this second one, the one from my friend, it became Flight One computer. That's the one running all the hardware and the simulator software itself. Flight Two 
that was the original computer that I had and had for years. I relegated it to running the three television screens and it's still running today very nicely. Now, I never had a problem, of course, with Flight uh, 2, the original computer. There have been many issues, however, with the one in Flight 1. So the fact that it has not performed as well as I'd hoped, well, it doesn't come as an, uh, particularly as a total shock. Now, my options. What are my options? Well, I have an even older motherboard, an X99 motherboard that I got in early 2015. I could, of course, pull out this motherboard and put the new motherboard in, connect it all up. Then I would have to reinstall the system. It's always important to do a clean install when you do these things. You want to make sure that you have no issues with software. Get rid of all the gremlins. So I'd have to put it in, clean installation of Windows, clean installation of P3D, PMDG, all the connections, etc. Or option B, buy another motherboard, a more modern one, one that I know is going to work. After all, a motherboard that I bought in 2015, electronics don't last forever, you know. <laughs> Neither do we. <laughs> so no matter which way I was going to go, it would mean a full installation, lots of work, lots of installing. To use the old motherboard or to use a new one? Hmm. That is the question, isn't it? Well, I decided that a new motherboard is the safest and most, most reliable course of action. And to pay for it, well, thank goodness I still have a good credit rating with my bank, eh? <laughs> it's not exactly what I'd hoped for, but that's the way it goes. Anyway. I just wanted to give you an update so you'd know I've been keeping busy and I've not been into mischief, and but I haven't forgotten all about you at all. I'll keep you posted, and when the parts arrive, I'll try to make another video showing you just how I put everything together so you can follow along the story of building a computer. So, sorry, no flight today. <coughs> So very sorry, but I'm grounded, grounded, grounded. But in the meantime, stay well and stay safe. And I'll see you soon.